I'm half human. I'm on another side. Excuse me. Nonsense. This is the doctor I know. I'm a time lord. Oh, I know you're a time lord. I'm from the planet Gallifrey, the constellation of Casterberus. I'm not a human being. The TV movie is an odd one because some automatically deem this as a failed attempt to bring Doctor Who back from the dead. There's so much to process from this. For instance, there's a regeneration near the beginning. There are some new characters, an old villain who new fans would have thought was always played by some American dude, and this was Paul McGann's debut as the 8th Doctor. Casual viewers are so quick to point out, oh yeah, this is George Lazenby of Doctor Who. They have no idea. To me, the 8th Doctor is the best of what we've seen previously. He is very alien with that spark of humanity. He likes Puccini, he wears Edwardian style clothing like his first incarnation, he no longer dons those question marks, and he even likes the ladies. Well, hello. This is new. For us, anyway. He did have a granddaughter, after all. Paul McGann is the best thing about this TV movie, which is messy for many reasons. I found the opening moment slightly problematic, because the Master is held on trial by the Daleks and is exterminated. They are not seen, just heard. And I'd rather we never heard anything. Are the Daleks on helium now? After this, somehow the Master's remains end up in the Doctor's possession. The Doctor here, still in his seventh incarnation, is enjoying life on his own in the TARDIS, before a suspected malfunction leads to the ship landing on December 30th, 1999 in San Francisco. So cliche. Master's remains escape, and is it just me, or do his remains look... um... suspicious? The Doctor exits the TARDIS and is shot down by a gang. I always hated this bit due to the fact that the Seventh Doctor had an amazing arc in his era, along with the novels, and it all comes to an end with him getting shot by a fucking gang in Chinatown. Oh, is that it then? Well, yeah, it is. The only redeeming factor here is Sylvester McCoy was a class act in his performance, and the regeneration on the operation table was something to behold. What follows is a spell of amnesia for the new 8th incarnation, as he tries to figure out who he is, all the while that ooze, <coughs> the master takes over a new host, Bruce. Good day, Bruce. From here, he is played by Eric Roberts. I cannot really sum up this man's performance as a master with my own words. You have to just watch this for yourself. I always dress for the occasion. After he recognises the cardiologist who operated on him, the doctor tries to convince Grace Holloway that he is the same man as the one who died on the operating table, just in a new body. I was dead too long this time. The anaesthetic almost destroyed the regenerative process. The Master gains access to the Doctor's TARDIS, with gang member Chang Li under his mind control. He convinces him that the Doctor is the bad one who is stealing bodies. Inside a TARDIS, he opens the Eye of Harmony. Whoa, 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 whoa. Back it up here. Why is the Eye here? The last time we saw this was on Gallifrey. But at this point, does it all really matter? We have strange Dalek voices, the Doctor's origins are up in the air, and the Master likes ripping his own fingernails off. Lovely. When the eye opens, the Doctor gets some weird visions that the world's going to end, and realises that he must stop the Master. Well, duh! We get this subplot with an atomic clock, and this great chase sequence. <laughs> Before we see the final battle take place at the Eye of Harmony inside the TARDIS. There's a lot of stake including the Doctor's own life force as well as the fate of the Earth and the universe itself. Again, it's cliche. 
After trapping the master inside the eye, the doctor repairs some of the damage that has been done. He saves Grace and Lee, and yeah, that's it. The doctor drops his new friends off back in San Francisco before departing on his own after Grace declined his offer to travel. There's a lot to take in. This will be alienating to someone who was new to Doctor Who. There are recognisable hallmarks like the police box, jelly babies, the sonic screwdriver, the master, and the doctor himself, but apart from that, everything else will baffle you. Going off the storyline, this was not the way Doctor Who should have been brought back after a long hiatus. There are parts which many would find convoluted. However, this TV movie is one which I've always found to be entertaining. After all, it is important for giving us the Eighth Doctor. The theme music by John Demney is a nice rendition. The special effects are great for 1996. That TARDIS interior is a thing of beauty. The characters are charming. I even appreciate Eric Roberts as the master. His incarnation will do anything to survive, even if it meant putting the universe at risk. I'm also glad that this is a continuation of the show, rather than a reboot, hence why I love McCoy being present for the start. The best reason to watch this story though, is because of Paul McGann. This man just gets it. He is the Doctor. It was such a shame that we did not get any more TV adventures with this particular incarnation, because I love him especially when he realises who he really is. Luckily, he has featured in plenty of expanded media and has appeared in the show again many years later, albeit briefly. As stated earlier, this is the first Doctor to snog his companion. Well, at least there's no sex in the TARDIS. Those must be comfortable shoes.